basically we'll be looking at uh, uh, in the, because there was some slight uh, uh, modification in the book and the notes in which we have uh, in the, in the sign up sheets. In the sign up sheet is showing, is reflecting chapter 13 in but in the actual book, is reflecting chapter 15 because I discovered they added uh, two new chapter uh, to this to this book. So there was a slight uh, modification. So basically what we'll be uh, discussing today is about how we can deal, work with uh, numbers uh, when uh, working uh, with R, when working with R. So we'll be looking at some uh, majority, uh, majority of the functions and uh, in which we'll be covering today Majority of them, they come from the base R, but we'll be looking at using some functions that is coming from the tiny verse. So, and the, basically the function we'll be looking at the counts, uh, the mutates, summarize. I think all these are all deep uh, these functions, they are all coming from uh, the deep package show. In the book, what they kind of explain is that the prerequisite for us to be able to start up things, we need to load uh, the tidy verse so that we can have uh, access to the core packages that are in the tidy verse and the data set in which we'll be using for the demo is still the NYC flight uh, 13 data sets. So first of all, they make a uh, mention of that we can, we can have this object, we can create uh, this object, uh, which is a string but actually it's a number. Maybe we can import our data set. Uh, we are having a, a column where we're supposed to be numeric, but it's being read in as a, as a character, which is a string. So you can use, they do explain that we can use uh, this function that is coming from the read R package, the, the pass, pass underscore double, then we just pass in that object, which is X. So in that case, we are going to convert uh, all this string is going to be converted back uh, to numeric, which is the actual, uh, but in some instances, in some instances we can have in the text, uh, we, are, we can have our numbers and some other special symbols that are attached uh, to those numbers. Then we will need to extract only those numbers then dropping those texts. So we can use, in that case, they do explain, that we can use the pass underscore number, then we just pass in the object, which is X, then it's going to omit all this uh, symbol, the dollar symbol, the percent symbol is only going to return only, uh, only the numbers. But if you look at the read R package, if you look at the pass logical integers, we can see that we, are, we still have some other key functions like the pass logical, this one deals with the logical vector, pass integer deals with the integer vector. And there are some kind of arguments uh, that can still go into those functions, like for NA to deal with missing data, locale, and also the trimming. So basically, here also they have a double. This is a string. So we use pass underscore double to retrieve all the numeric uh, we have. We have this, we just use past underscore number to retrieve all the numbers uh, dropping uh, the strings. So this, this section, this part is, is basically, is just straightforward. I don't know if uh, there are any comments or contribution before we look at the counts. I think this is straightforward, past double, pass number. I think we could see your screen before, but it's not showing now. Is it the notes? We can't can see, see your screen. Okay, okay, it's like I pause uh, from my own end, sorry. But you can see my notes screen now. Yes, thank you. Okay. So the, basically what I was saying is that we can have, we can have a, we can have our objects in which we have created the vector. And this object, we, we use string to save this number, to create this object. There are all strings. 
So, but we need to retrieve only the unique values, the numbers out of it. So we can use pass underscore double. Then we, we pass in the object, which is what X. So it's going to return all, all, the, all the numeric value, which is going to be numeric. Then we can also have, we can also have it in this form. Okay, where this is $1,234. So, but in this case, we are only interested in the only the numbers. We are, we are not interested in the dollar symbols or the percentage symbols. We need to retrieve only the numbers. So in that case, we can also use pass underscore number. Then we only pass in the X value X. So when we pass in the value X, it returns only the unique number, which is here we have one, two, three, four, which is what we had here. Here we have three, five, uh, one, three, which is what we are going to retrieve here. And here we have 59, which is going to return uh, 59. It's going to give us only the unique number uh, and it's going to omit all the non-numeric text value. It's going to omit, it's going to return only the unique uh, number. I think basically this part is uh, straightforward. I don't know if there are any questions before we, we look at counts. Okay, so I think I can proceed. So basically this part uh, uh, is about when we are looking at counts. Maybe we have an object flight, which is a data frame. Then we want to count all the destination all the flights because the, all the flights are destination. So when we say count destination, uh, the default output is going to arrange the number of counts of those destination in ascending order that is from the lowest, uh, is going to just arrange them based on, based, on, based on the destination. So this, we are having ABQ, we are having 254, this is two, six, five. This is four, three, nine. This is eight, uh, the number of the eights. This is what, 17,215. So, and it also give us, because the output is always going to be table. So table is going to always show us the first uh, six rows. So it's going to, and it's going to return all the counts. But if we want to, if we want to order, this counts by showing us the most frequent counts that is to start from the most frequent counts so they do explain that we can just pass in the sort we can sort those uh destination by using sort equals uh, to true so once we put pass sort equals to true so we can see it's going to sort it by the most frequent so this is the highest which is 17,283 followed by this, so it's going to sort all uh, the, the destination of those flights in descending order. So it's going to arrange all in, in descending order, which is similar to, and if you want, they do explain that if you want to see all the, all the destination, we can just pipe it to a view. So when we pipe uh, this, we just pass this, like this argument and then view is going to show us all the destination in our uh in our house studio uh, view pane or or we can use prints n is equals to what infinite n is equals to what infinite is going is going to give us prints for all the entire outputs in this, our computation is going to return the entire output. But alternatively, we can achieve uh, this, same, this same workflow can be achieved by using group by and also what summarize. And uh, we can use group by and summarize. And they do explain uh, in the book that this is useful because it, it allows us to do other summaries at the same time, because we can do look at the mean, we can do the median, we can do quantile. So this is always very useful. Here we're having this, the same thing we did uh, above. Here we have flights, and then we say group by, we, group, we are grouping by all the destination, and then 
we did our summarize n is equals to what n which is going to give us all the unique counts for those uh, destination and then we said delay is equals to what mean of what arrival delay n a dot rm equals true which means that if there are any missing uh, data in the arrival delay is going to omit it and then it do the computation uh, for the mean and this is going to return the same results as we have earlier on but if we want to achieve what we did earlier on with the sort then we need to do what add another argument here which will be arranged in descending order of all the counts so it's going to arrange it in that order but they do explain that if we want to use the counts the counts is only going to work when we are inside uh, the must be used inside the data maxim verbs like motets when we are working with motets filter or group by because these functions they are coming from uh the deeper uh, we can't use we can't use counts outside uh the deeper verb is not going to work it's going to return uh an, an error so we only use this when we are inside uh, the deeper the deeper verb so that is what they do explain in the book so there there are some other useful uh techniques in which they also explain in the book using the the end distinct the end distinct which is going to give us uh the unique counts for each of the distinct value that have been found uh in the data set so here also they explain that we are having flights and then they say group by which is going to be we are grouping by all all the destination and then we summarize we said we have carriers then we say n distinct then carriers so carriers n distinct carriers so it's going to calculate going to give us uh, the computation of all the distinct value of the carrier then we are arranging in descending order of carriers so in descending order, so the most frequent carrier is going to be in the top, which is seven, 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 six, and and so on, and so on in that order. Then we can also we can also use uh, the weight argument. They also explain that we can use the weight argument, which is equivalent to the sum. So in that case, we still have the flights that we are using. We are grouping by all the tail number, and then we summarize miles, which is equals to sum of all the distance. So we are sum. We are looking. We are computing the sum of all the distance. So here we are having three thousand four hundred eighteen. So it's going to give us all the sum of the distance uh, in miles. But this same output. We can achieve this same thing by using the weight argument, which is what they what, what they did here. It's still going to give us uh, the same result because in R, there is no one way of doing once in there are several approach. So here we have flights, and then we say counts. What are we counting? We are counting all the tail number, and then they say weight is equals to what distance. So it's going to give us the same results as we have above. We are still going to have the same results just as what we did here. So this, this, and this is the same thing. But in case uh, we are interested in counting all the, the missing uh, data in a, some specific uh, rows, we want to know where we are having uh, missing data, we want to compute the sum of those missing data. We can just group by destination and then we summarize number of cancelled is equals to sum is dot na of departure of departure time. So here we are computing all the missing data that we can found find in in the departure time. So here we can see that. We have zero missing data here. We have zero missing data here. We have 20. Here we have 317. Here we have uh, 21. 
before we look at the exercise, I don't know. Before we look at the exercise, are there comments? For the counts, I think it's a bit straightforward. Hello? No questions on the count. Okay, so let me yeah. proceed. Okay. Let me proceed to the exercise. Yeah, the first question there is said, how can you use counts to count the number of rows with a missing value for a given variable? I think this question has been answered here. Here we have flights. We just need to group it by the variable in which uh, we want to, we group it by a certain value which has to be categorical variable. Then we can just say summarize. Uh, we have, we just give it the name of the new column we want to uh, count all the unique value. We, we can name that column here. Then equals to sum is dot na. Then we, we can, you, it can, it can be either departure time or it can be any other. It can either be departure time, distance, flight. So we can just pass that here. So in that case, it's, it's, going, to do, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to compute uh, the same thing. And we are going to get uh, the outputs. It's going to compute all those rows uh, where we are having uh, missing data. So we are going to. Yeah, this one says expand the following calls to count. To instead use group by, summarize, and arrange. So, so expand this following call. So I'll copy this to code. Copy this to code and let's see what we have in our studio. See so you. Okay. Okay. See what we have. Library. I think we have tidyverse. Library. NYC flights. That's it, yeah. Okay, it has been loaded already. Flights. I think they say we should use group by summarize and you only use to group by summarize and arrange. Okay. Should bring in group by summarize and arrange. Okay. Let me set this up. So here we have flights. And then I said group by, we group him by all the destination, okay? And then summarize, I think N is equals to N, which will give us the crown, group by summarize and arrange, and then arrange, in descending order of, I think, counts. Okay, so this is the this is what we have here. Hello, someone, Mike. <laughs> I think no. it's let's see you, your mic is on. Oh, sorry. Okay. So this is what we have in the first example in the book. They gave us this example where we have flights. I say we have counts, destination, sort equals to true. Okay, they say we should convert this to use a uh, group by, summarize and arrange to give us this same result. So. This is what I did here. I have the same flight. I group by 
destination, summarize, n is equals to what n to give up me all the counts. And then I arrange it in descending order of the counts, which gave me the same. From there, I get, I have this same output, which is the same thing as what I have here in what they did in the book. 17283, 17283. So the second example here, this is what they did. Okay, they're using counts on the word tail number, then the weight is equals to what distance. So in order for me to achieve that, so I said flight, and then I group. I group by, I'm grouping by tail, tail number. This is what I have. And then summarize. Okay. Summarize weight is equals to sum of distance, which is what we have here. Okay. So weight is equals to sum of distance, but what they have here. Okay, they're having three, four, one, eight, and two, five. So what I have here, three, four, one, eight, which is the same thing as what we have here. So in R, we can see that in R, they are, there is just as I said earlier, this code gave us these outputs. We can do the same thing using our dplyr verb which is still going to give us uh, the same uh, the same result. So let's proceed. I think that is that for the exercise. If there are comments, then you can. Or should we proceed? OK. So that is that for the, the exercise for exercise 15.3.1. So this uh, numeric transformation. So, so in this section, we are going to see how uh, how we are going to, uh, how we are going to do a uh, transformation uh, using numbers uh, when when we are working with uh, Ah, so basically we have a, a vector here, which we have in, with numbers one, two, 10, and what, 20. So what we say, we assign this to an object called X. So when we, when we, we have X uh, divided by a certain number five. So basically what R is going to do, is going to pick one, uh, divided by five is going to pick two divided by five and it return the re recycle the result 10 divided by five which is going to we have 10 divided by by five and also 20 20 divided by uh divided by five and it's going to output the results there. So here we're having X, the short arm for this same function, which is X over five, we are going to have X divided by C, five, 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 five. So basically X is going to divide by this, 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 and this. I think this, this is a straightforward. So it's going to return 0 0.2, 0 0.4, uh, 2.0, and, and also 4.0 because here 10 divided by five is gonna be two, 20 divided by five is four. So it's going to, it's going to recycle uh, the whole output and return uh, the results. So we can also have X multiply by this. So when we have X multiply by this, uh, what R is going to do is that, It's going to pick X multiplied by one and two. So it's going to pick 
because x here we have one multiply at him one multiply by one is going to be is going to be one we have two let me see Jerry. you can only want to a single number A one if okay 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 so in this case i think r is going to return an a one into us let me copy this so that we see the everything in our studio paste it here then i will share my house studio see this okay so let me share our studio numbers uh, okay so we have this object here okay so the first example was x divided by five okay so that was clear so in this other case we have in x divided by the vector uh one and two so it's going to return it's going to return one four ten and also 40 so x multiplied by vector of one and two so here we're having one multiplied by one i think it's uh, it's going to be one we're having two multiply by two is going to be what four we are having 10 multiplied by one is going to be what 10 and we're having 20 multiplied by two i think it's going to be what 40 so that is clear so in this other case we're having x multiplied by one two and three i think this is going to return an error it's going to return if outputs is going to also return warning message in x see one two and three longer object length is not a multiple of shorter object length because here we are having three objects here we are having one two because of this is not a multiplication predictive value of this so r is going to is going to return a warning because in this case, we are going to have one multiplied by one is going to be one. Two multiplied by two is going to be four, which is correct. Then 10 multiplied by three is going to be what, 30. Then we are going to have 20 multiplied by what? It not know, Al does not understand what is going to multiply 20 by. So that is why it returned 20 here and it gave us a warning that longer object length, which is our vector X, is not a multiplicative of the shorter object length, which is vector C, this vector that we created here. So because of that, R true and error, telling us that the longer object length, which is one, two, 10 and 20 is not a, of, is not of the same length as this shorter object length, which is one, two, and three. I don't know whether it is clear or I can explain further again. But, Mr. Fenn, but in the yes. case of objects one and two, yes, we are not, he doesn't return it as a warning message. So, why, why is it like that? Okay, so this is object one, which is X. If I check X, it's one, two, 10, and 20. Okay, so when I divide this, when we when we check this, one and two is one, four, 10, 40, because this object, we pick one. We multiply one by what? One. The output is, the result is what? One. I pick the second object in the longer object, two. I multiply two by two. The result is four. I pick the, for I go back to the longer object, we have 10. So if I say 10 multiplied by one, it's going to be what, 10. 
I go back again, 20 is the last object. 20 multiplied by what? Two is going to be 40. So in this case, the longer object and the shorter object, we can, they are, we can, they can multiply, is a multiple of each other because, but if you look at this other object, we are having how many? One, two, three, four in the object X. Four items. This one we are having just how many? Three items. We pick, if we run this, okay, we pick one multiplied by one. The, the output is what? One, which is correct. We pick two multiplied by two. The output is four, which is correct. We pick 10 multiplied by what? Three. The result is what? 30. But now the last object, 20 is going to be multiplied by what? We don't know. So that is why R should throws this error. But if I put a object here, if I put five, there will be no error. Is it clear? Should I? I hope it's clear. Now, if I put it's five there, clear. very clear. There will be no error. So this one yeah, okay. shows that. So, so I should go back to the should go back to the book again. Okay, this basically talk about uh, filtering. When we are doing filtering, maybe we are having a flight. We want to filter for months. That is where we have January and February because this one, this one, I think at times it happened to me uh, at times when, uh, when you, you want to, you want to, we want to return unique months of January and February. Because when we look at the final output, we discover that uh, R might not return the expected outputs in which we are we, we need in that case. But uh, the best way, because of time, the best way to resolve this is to say filter. Then we have months. So let me just grab this. Go back. Go back to our studio. The best way to do that. Instead of me to do this, okay. Uh, it's for me to do this months percent in percent C one is for me to do this. Okay. The best way for us to achieve this is to just say filter flight and then filter months percent in percent C, which is going to return all the unique month for what January and February. And it's going to that is what is the output that is what R is going to return. Because at times when we use one and two, R might be in my first of us we return the even, then it now go back to other times you did not you will not get uh the the expected output. So it's better we use the percent in percent uh, functions, which is uh, to, to, to pass in, the, to pass in uh, what we want to get. So in that case, uh, we can get uh, our expected outputs. Uh, this part is talking about uh, minimum and maximum. I think this one, is also, but I will. I need to explain this. So maybe this. In this case, we have a triple, which is a row-wise data frame. Okay, it's a row-wise data frame of DF where we have in X and Y two column. We have one and three, five and two, uh, seven and N. So we have DF, and then we have in mutates the minimum, which is P minimum of what? X and Y, so we, we want to we want to we want to compute a closely related function as p minimum and p maximum. So we want to pair. We want to compute the minimum value of both X and Y at once. Omitting all the missing data, we want to also compute the maximum value by comparing both uh, X and Y column of this triple, dropping all the 
the missing data. So if we do that, if we do that, we are going to have our output. So what is R doing in this case? What is R doing in this case? In the first instance here, P minimum of X and Y. X value, we have one and three. So what is the minimum value of between the pairs of one and three? The minimum value is going to be one. So when we pair five and two, what is going to be the minimum value, which is two? When we pair seven and NA, so it's, since R is dropping the NA, is going to pick seven as the minimum value there. So when we come back to the column P max, so what is R doing there? If we have a pair of seven and three, so R is good, the maximum is going to be three. So that is why we are having three here. So if we pair five and two, so the maximum is going to be what, five. So that is why R is dropping this year. If you come back to the last row, we are having seven and NA. So the maximum value is still going to be seven. So it's still going to give us uh, seven as a maximum value. So, but in some instance, we might make mistake. We do not use P min and P max. We can now use minimum and maximum. Okay, but in that case, our result is going to be different. Our result is going to be different because in the minimum, we are going to have one, one, one. Because when we look at here, uh, what, what is going to be the minimum value here? The minimum value here is one. So what is going to be the maximum value here? The maximum value of between one, three, five, two, seven, and N, the maximum value is going to be seven. I don't know if this uh, is clear because this is kind of tricky. This because here we are having one, three, five, two, seven, and N. So the minimum value is going to be what? One. It's going to, R is going to pick one as the minimum value. Then we have one, three, five, two, seven, and N. The maximum value is going to be what seven. So I will just return seven, 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 one, one, one for minimum. Why this P min and P max? P min and P max will always return for the first row, is going to return the minimum and the maximum. For the second row, the minimum and the maximum. For the third row, the minimum and the maximum is going to be seven, seven. So, so the P minimum and um, they are all from the deep layer package. So it's going to uh, return that. Uh, for this part, it's about uh, modular arithmetic. So the modulus at times, may, maybe when we are uh, doing uh, our data wrangling, we can have some a lot of uh, both modulus and modulus, which has to do with the remainder and also the integer uh, division. So we can have this. So we can have one to a, a, a object from one to 10, then we have uh, modulus three. So we can say one, one divided by one divided by three returns. So let's see this. Let's see this actually in our studio. Let's see this. Okay, so here yeah, we are having, so when I say one essence dollar three, which is zero, yeah. So this will be zero, this also zero because two, because when we have two modulus three is still zero, when we have three, modulus three is one because three divided by three, what will be left is one. Uh, zero, zero divided by three. When we have zero divided by three, what is left is nothing is left, okay? When we have two divided by three, which is uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, so that is why we are having, when we say, two modulus three is still zero. When we have four modulus three is one. 
when we have five, when we say five divided by three, what is, what is left? R set is three, is one that is left. So, check, check, check. Okay, so, so when we look at the modulus, so is by taking this object, uh, divided by a certain number. So what is going to be the remainder? So that is what R is going to return. So when we have uh, an integer division, so that is we're having two percentage symbol of three, which will be one integer division of uh, three, is the output is going to be one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, and one. There, and they do explain that modular arithmetic is handy for flight data set because we can use it to unpack schedule uh, departure time. So let's see how they did that here. Here they have the flight objects, and then they said mutates, then the hour, which is scheduled departure time. Then they have the modulus of uh, 100, which is going to convert uh, the scheduled departure time to hour. Then we have minutes, which is scheduled departure time, uh, integer division of 100, which will convert this to minutes. Then they use this unique function dot keep is equals to used, which is only going to keep all the column in which we use uh, all the column in which we use, then any column in which we did not make computation on is going to drop it and just return uh, the final output, which is scheduled departure time, hour, and also minutes. And it's going to put uh, the, the outputs, it's going to return uh, the, final, uh, the final results there. We can also do some uh, kind of uh, visualization. We can visualize the outputs. Here we're having flights, we are grouping by hour, which is scheduled uh, departure time, which is modulus of 100, and summarize proportion of cancel flights, which is going to be mean is dot na for all the missing data of what departure time. Then here, what they are doing here, they are computing the counts and then the filter for where we have an hour that is greater than one or greater than one. So all the hours that is less than one, R is going to drop it. Then they do uh, the visualization. Well, X is gonna be hour, Y is proportion cancel. Then we're having jump line, color is gray 50. Then jump points, which is going to put the points on the plot. Then the size is equals to the counts. So the size of the points, which is uh, equals uh, to the counts. And here they have a brief note, a line plot with scheduled departure hour on the X axis and a proportion of cancel flights on the Y axis. Cancellation seems to accumulate over the course of the day until 8 p.m. Because we, where we have go cancellation, we can see the bigger dots are much less likely to be uh, canceled. So, where we are having uh, more uh, cancellation, we can see those bigger dots. Where we are having less, we can see we are using, because we, we put the size uh, to be small. But... Okay, so this section mainly talking about uh, transformation. So we'll be looking at how, how we can do some kind of transformation when, uh, when, uh, we, are, when we are working with our data set. So, and in this transformation, we'll be looking at uh, the logarithmic transformation. So here we're starting with starting, which is 100, then the interest is 1.05. So we're creating an object called money, which is a table. Then we have in here, which is from one to 50. Then the, we say we have money, which is gonna be starting, multiplied by the interest raised to the power of year. So we have starting, which we are going to, which will be 100 multiplied by 1.05 raised to the power of year. So the first one will be the, 
the year will be one, two, up till 50. So when we do that, we are going to, we are going to create the new object in our environment and that the name of that object is going to be money. So if we visualize it, the data set is money. We place X as the year, Y as the money plus germ line. So it's going to just give us this uh, exponential, which shows that the money, the, uh, the, our money, our, the increase over time how the money, proportion of the money increase over time. But when we place at uh, the y-axis on a log scale, so we can just see that the line is just a, a it's just a straight, it's just a straight line which shows that y is equals to m times x uh, plus, uh, plus b. But in the book, they do explain that when we are working with the log scale, when we want to log uh, transform, they do explain that we should always stick uh, that we have three types of log transformation. We have the natural log to base E, we have log to base two, and also log uh, to base 10. But they do make some kind of recommendation that we should always go with either the log to base two or log to base 10, because they say it is easy to interpret because difference of one on the log scale correspond to doubling on the original scale and a difference of minor one correspond to a halving whereas log 10 is easy to back transform. They, they do explain that when we are log transforming, we should either stick to either log to base two or the log to base 10. That is what they do explain in the book. So the next, the next parts, I'm so sorry because of time. In, ca in case we are unable to finish uh, the chapter, maybe when we are country, when we will continue our discussion, maybe next year, I will continue from where we stop before we go into the next chapter. So the next is about uh, rounding. So maybe we have a number, we can have an object called X. So when we round that, one, two, three point four five six. So if you round it up, it's going to be one, two, three. But if you want uh, to specify a specific number of digits in which we want to round our number by, we can say we have round one, two, three point four five six. Then the digits should be two. So it's going to be one, two, three point four six. If it is one, it's going to be one, two, three point five. Then if it is around uh, to nearest 10, then we can pass in uh, minus one or nearest 100, we can use minus two. So it's going to round, it's going to round our uh, object to that object's value. So we also have, uh, they also, we also have the floor and the ceiling, which also rounds, which we can also use for rounding up. So here we have in X, we have one, two, three point four, five, six. So when we floor X, when we floor X, we are going to have our result as one, two, three. So when we ceiling on X, which will be one, two, four. They, and they say that this function don't have a digit argument. So you can instead scale down round and then scale up back. We can either scale it down, we round it, then we now scale it up using the ceiling, ceiling functions. So we can round down to nearest two digits by using floor X divided by 0 0.01 times 0 0.01. So when we do that, we have one, two, three point four five. We can also have round up to nearest two digits where we have ceiling, x over this times this. So it's going to give us uh, 1.23.46. I don't know if there are any comments up till now. I think uh, we are still in round before we can look at the cuts. I think the round, uh, the round function is uh, kind of straightforward.
Can I proceed? Are there questions? No questions on round, thank you. Okay. If there is no question, let's look at the courts. Okay, so this also, this they also talk about the courts, which is still the base R function. So we have in our objects of X, so we can just pass cuts. We pass in the object X, we specify the breaks, which is 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. So once we run this, so it's going to just, uh, it's going to return all the cuts. Then it's going to also specify uh, the levels. But in some instances, we, cannot, we might want to pass in a label. We, can, we might want to pass in a label to our cuts. So in that case, the labels must be one place less than the actual than the, the actual breaks because here we have one, two, three, four, five. So the labels must be one place less. One, two, three, four. So the labels must be one place left. So we have in SM, MD, LG, Excel. So when we pass run this, we are going to have SM, SM. SM, MD uh, is also going to pass in the, uh, the levels of those cuts because this, this is uh, the base R, still the base R. So here we have in object Y, we have in a missing data here, which is NA, we have in minus 10, 5, 10, and what, 30. Then we have in cuts of what, Y, then we, we specify the breaks. These are the breaks. So when we run that, we have in NA, NA, 0 to 5, 5 to 10, NA. Why we have in NA? Because the NA value outside the range of the breaks will become NA. So any values that do not fall within these breaks from our object, any value that will not fall within that breaks so R will, recall, we will treat it as missing also. So that is why we also have in NA, NA, and also NA because they fall outside uh, the bricks. And they do explain that we can further look at the documentation, which is include the lowest. And this, okay, this one about cumulative and rolling aggregates. I think this, this cumulative and linear aggregates, I think these are useful function, but I'm, I am most used to cumulative sum because when I'm doing some uh, visualization, maybe time series or rainfall that I might say, oh, I want to look at the cumulative rainfall over time. So I used to use the cum sum, cumulative production, cumulative minimum, cumulative maximum. So yeah. They are having an object called X, which is range from one to 10. So they are using the cumulative sum on X. So here we have in one, three, six, 10, 15, 21, uh, 28, 36. So that is how it's going to keep on adding until we get to the last, which is 55. But if we want most, more, uh, if we need more customization on this, they do explain that we can use uh, this funk, this package called uh, the slider. We have not used slider before. We can use the slider package in which we can use to further customize our cumulative uh, sum. Here we have slider vec passing the x. What we are looking at is the sum. Then it said that before they just say infinite. So it is going to be one, three, six. It's going to return all. Then we can also have slide vec x, which is sum. Uh, all the cumulative sums should come before we have one. So it's, it should all come before one. So here is going to be one, three, five, seven, nine, to what, 19. So if we want uh, more customization, we can look at uh, the, the slider, slider package. Uh, because of our time, I think I would like, I will skip this exercise because of time. So this one is about uh, general transformation. So general transformation, we look at rank. We look at rank. So in the rank part, so we have in an object called X. 
uh, we have an object called X, which we have one, two, two, three, four, and NA. So we have minimum rank of what X, which will be one, two, two, four, five, and also NA. But when we have minimum rank descending order of X, so descending order, which will arrange all the rank, the most frequent rank will not be at the top. We have five, three, three, two, one, and also what NA is going to place NA at the at the last. So, but we but we might want further uh we might want further uh uh outputs outside the minimum rank. They do explain we can use the row number to retrieve all the row number from that table in which you have created. We can also get all the dense rank, all the percentage rank, and all the cumulative distance of, from the object. So when we do that, we are going to have a different output. We are going to have a different output where we have X, which is one, two, two, three, and four. Then the row number one, two, three, because these are all the row numbers we are going to get here. Then dense rank, which will be one, two, two, three, four, and also what NA. So we can also set NA dot last is equals to keep to keep NA as but keep retain all the NA as actually as the missing data. Here they here they use the modulus for the row number, which is divided by uh, integer division of three. This one, the row number should be minus one. And also the DF. I think, I think we should stop here. I don't know if there are any question when we, and so that, I think we should stop here or should I proceed? Hello? Yes, I almost have, sir. Yes. I don't know. Should we proceed, Bestie, Christine? Hello? I think we can just finish. I think we have two left or three. Yes, three. yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me try and see how we can go through so that by next year we start a different chapter. So here they are talking about the lead function and the lag function, which allow us to refer to values just before or just after the current value. So here we have in X, which is 2, 5, 11, 11, 19, 35. So lack of x, so lack is going to part NA at the start. Then we now give us 2, 5, 11, 11, 19. Then it's going to treat this as what NA, but it will bring it to the start. Why lead? Lead is going to what? Treat the first, the starting value as NA. So it's going to treat this 2 as NA, which we are, is going to omit 2 is going to what? Give us 5, 11, 11, 19, 35, and what? NA. So that is what the, the basically the leak, the lead and the lag function is doing. Here we can have consecutive identities. So we have an event, which is a, a table of time of events. Then we have events. Then we have in mutates difference, which is time minus lag time, then default, which is what first time, then gap, which is difference greater than or equals to five. So for us to get that difference of that is either greater than or equals to five, which is going to be logical, out the output is going to be logical, either true or false. So if you look at here, we're having false, 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 and what true. So the output is going to be logical, true and false. But at times, but how do we go from logical to so something that we can group by consecutive comes to the rescue because we might have our events, we have mutates, 
group equals to what? Consecutive ID, which of all the gap. So the consecutive ID function, what this does is that where we have fours, it's going to treat all fours as one, okay? Then it's going to return all the true value as two. It's going to place two for all where we have true, and it's going to place false for all where we have uh, false for all where we have one. So, which is uh, very useful. We can just explore that uh, with our visualization here. What they are doing is that they are uh, consecutive ID of X. So they are creating a new column called ID. Then slice add number is equals to what one. You want to keep the first row of each repeated x that is easier to express with the combination of consecutive ids so this is going to what return all the first row this is this b22 two, two, uh, c4 and 3 uh, d3 and 4 e9 and 5 and also a4 and 6 so i think the last part uh, the last part is about uh, the numeric, uh, the numeric summaries, which is has to be the main and the median and also the percentage. So here, basically, they are having flights. They are grouping by year, month, and day. Then they summarize the mean, mean of what departure delay, omitting the NA. Then they also use the median, and also this is giving us the counts dot group equals to drop to drop the grouping in this in line two so when they pass that to ggplot then the x it should be mean y it should be median jump a b line to put uh, the best uh, fit line the slope should be equals to one then they say the intercept is zero color is y size is two then the jump points to put this uh, the a point there. So we are going to come up uh, with this scatter plot of both showing the uh, relationship between the median and the mean, which shows uh, a positive uh, relationship. And they do explain that we might want to wonder why we do not use mode most common value. This is because summary that only works well for every simple cases, which is why you might have learned about it in high school, but it does not work well with many real data sets. So it seems the mode does not work well, so they stick to either the median or, or the mean. So in the last part, they, they look at working with minimum, maximum, and also uh, the quantile. Minimum, maximum, quantile, which is maximum of all the departure delay, then they look at the quantile for the partial delay, which is uh, 0 0.95. Uh, they drop all the missing data. So here we have in year, month, and day. These are all the maximum. Here we have in 853, 379. This is the 95th uh, quantile, 95 uh, uh, then. And in the last, they look at uh, the spread of the data sets, looking at uh, the standard deviation and also uh, the interquartile range. They look at the spread. They look at the spread using the distance, which is IQR for all the distance. Then we have N is equals to what N, then dot dot group, which will be drop all the, which is going to drop all the grouping. Uh, the grouping uh, uh, value, then the filter distance SD that is greater than zero, which we, have, which we have one, one, one and one. Then for the distribution, this is mainly distribution. They use uh, the histogram. They use histogram to uh, display uh, the departure delay. And we here we can see there are the departure delay. They are somehow are skewed, uh, they are somehow skewed uh, to the right. And here they were using, they use uh, the frequency polygon. I've not used this interaction function with this 
frequency polygon, but when I read the chapter, that is when I discovered these flights. And then the filter departure delay that is less than 120. And then they say GG plots, X should be departure delay. Then group is equals to what interactions of both day and month plus zoom frequency polygon. Then the bin width should be five. Then alpha, which controls uh, the transparency, should be one divided by five. So this is going to give us uh, this uh, frequency polygon, which is still similar to the distribution we saw uh, above. And this last part, there is some final, this last part just shows uh, the position for the first of the partial delay, the end of the partial delay, which is five, then the last departure delay mainly shows just uh, the position. What is here, I think. I think uh, the last part there, what is there is just the exercise. It's just the exercise. I think that this is mainly basically the summary of uh, what uh, we were able uh, to cover. So we look at the court number. Uh, we look at the minimum rank. Uh, we look at how we can pass a number when we are working with R. So just as we all know, everything, each day we keep on learning and learning one one on one skill. That is how uh, uh, we we do improve in our every day. So I don't know. I posted. I I don't know. We'll be resuming again. I think in, I updated the sign up sheets. I think that will be that will be ninth. 9th of January that I have there. Though I will still update us in the Slack. I will still update us in the Slack. Based on what, I do not know. What is your suggestion about uh, the time? Because I, I said earlier, I want to discuss with John if we can shift back to the previous time. I discovered that time slot favors majority of members of the club. Is it okay for him to set up a new uh, a dashboard whereby we can select a unique time that will be favorable for us? Or we should just switch back to the initial time so that once we resume 9th of January, it will favor the entire members of the group. What are your suggestions? I think Christine, Besti, Olukunle, what are your suggestions? Anyhow, I'm okay with the, the five okay. to six. Okay, I think to go back to seven. Okay, so no problem. I think I will discuss uh, with John if we should that the the entire members of the club they are they are happy that we should switch back to the previous time so that it will favor accommodate everybody so that everybody can participate. So we'll see next year. So Merry Xmas and Happy New Year in advance. So see you next year, 9th of January. We'll continue from without. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Okay. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Okay. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Okay, no problem.